We come now to this, this next message and Pastor James, who writes with such clarity and power, is going to take us into a challenge of our thinking today. He is writing to people just like us, people under pressure. And he's writing to them saying, if you are led by emotion, you will be defeated. And when you're under pressure, you don't want to be led by feelings. You want to be led by wisdom. And we're going to see the difference between earthly wisdom and the wisdom of God. And it's not wisdom as in information to make a decision, but it's wisdom that is a lifestyle. Now, the Word of God is anointed. If you believe that, say amen. It's true. So that's a corporate. One more time, say amen. If you believe that, we're a little bit of a talk back church. Uh, the sermon will be way shorter if you talk back. David, come on, man. You got so loud right there. I love you. I really want the word of the Lord to just settle in on hearts that are ready to receive. Ready with expectation. So I'm going to pray. And then we're going to go into this message. And my prayer is that like last night and like the 9 o'clock service, the Holy Spirit will just settle in on this word in your life. We are believing for a time around these altars at the end for the Holy Spirit to confirm in your life this word and how this resonates with you, what God wants to say to you. You're not here by accident. You're here for a purpose. And in the love of God, he's going to speak to you today. And out of his word, he's going to help you, encourage you, challenge you, convict you. And you will leave differently than the way you came. And we will leave differently than the way we came. To God be the glory. And may we receive this today. Would you pray into that with me? Lord Jesus, thank you for a church that believes in worshiping you with passion that believes in engaging the Word. We're going to engage the Word as the Word engages us today. And our hearts are open and ready to receive. So have your way as our prayer in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. James chapter 3, verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. James will not back off in every chapter of this book of challenging us for our faith to show up in how we live. We believe and we put it into practice. Amen? Verse 14, if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. Let me give a little commentary as we look at what James calls earthly wisdom. It's very selfish and divisive. The deceptive lies of the enemy lead you to self-ambition, if you will, thinking that that's going to leave you better, more competent, more secure, only to find that your mind turns on you and it leaves you more insecure. This division that comes from earthly wisdom is not just between you and someone else. It's within your own heart, your own thoughts, your own emotions, to leave you fragmented so that then disorder is what fills the culture between you and everyone around you. Earthly wisdom. But he goes on to say in verse 17, the wisdom that comes from heaven, godly wisdom, is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. In verse 13, he starts with this question, who is wise and understanding among you? He says, let them show it, listen to these words, by their good life. 
There is a good life that we're called to that we can live that will show that we're walking in the wisdom of God. And that is defined for us, first of all, as being peace-loving. Those words mean to resolve conflict. It means you are quick to try and get on the solution side. See how different that is than earthly wisdom? Earthly wisdom likes to be angry, uh, thrives in chaos. Godly wisdom looks for getting to the solution side, understands the power of aged anger. Not only does peace-loving wisdom seek to resolve conflict, it even thinks it through and says, what's causing this? Is there a way to walk in peace? Even in some cases, preventing or erasing the potential of conflict. He goes on to say that this wisdom is considerate. It means that it's kind. It's honest, but it's kind. A few weeks ago, I was in another city. I was in my car at a major intersection, and this guy was street preaching. And he was pointing at everybody and saying, Jesus says you're going to hell. Really kind guy. Next car, Jesus says you're going to hell. I'm four cars back. So I put my window down to listen because there are some that are talking back. And the guy in front of me, when he gets to him, the street preacher says, Jesus says you're going to hell. He says, Bon Jovi says, you give love a bad name. <laughs> I drove by and said, what he said. Because the wisdom of God is considerate. Notice it's also submissive. The New King James Version says in this place, willing to yield. Submissive there means to yield up. Let me get into this word with you for just a moment. It means to yield up to God. It is pressing us to check our hearts, and if there's any unforgiveness, whatever caused it, yield it up to God and offer forgiveness and be quick to do it. And a person who is walking in wisdom when there's an issue, when there's betrayal, when there's rejection, when there is hurt, you don't give it up. You yield it up to God, and then in the power of God and godly wisdom, you find the capacity to forgive. If you are in an abusive situation, if you are in a dangerous situation, you need to find safety. You need to find people who can come around you and speak wisdom into your life. Being submissive does not mean you stay in a dangerous place. What I'm speaking of here is that the offense that is in your heart that would like to grow down into what's called a, a root of bitterness, he is saying, yield that up to God. And then you even live in what's called a track record of yielding. When the Bible gets to interpret itself, which is it's always its own best interpreter, then this passage would lead you over to chapter 4, where James says life is like a vapor. It's like a mist. It is so short. It says life is short and God is sovereign. Let me say that again. Life is short and God is in control. Since life is short and God is in control, don't spend a minute letting unforgiveness defeat you. Yield it up. Move on. The wisdom life the wisdom of God is a person who is walking with a track record of yielding. The person who is quick to forgive because they, they, they live with this awareness. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't even know if we get tomorrow. That being true, and with how quick life passes, why would we spend five minutes today letting something defeat us? 
James says the wisdom of God, it leads you into yielding that up. Then notice, he says this good life is the life that's full of mercy. Full of mercy. I love this. It is challenging. It challenges me. Mercy is compassion. It's forbearance. Mercy is people who have been forgiven understand that we are then going to forgive. The forgiven forgive. That's mercy. The mercy we've received turns into the ministry of mercy to others around us. One person said, we are very good lawyers for our own mistakes and very good judges for the mistakes of others. So I want to reword that. We become great judges of others' sin, but great lawyers of our own. I mean, we adjudicate ourselves, but others we may, and we need to extend mercy to others out of the mercy we have received. Aren't we all here by the mercy of God that came in our place of need? And it is out of that mercy that we forgive. Let's let the Bible interpret itself. So here James is in this part of his sermon. Earlier in the sermon, for us it would be James 2.13. Look at it. Judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. That's very clear and direct. I love this last sentence. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Anybody that knows Jesus knows where he found you, knows what he did to forgive you, can shout yes to that sentence, mercy triumphs over judgment. Now, later in James' sermon, chapter 5 for you and me, verse 11, last sentence, it says, the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. So to be full of mercy is to be full of the Holy Spirit is to be walking in the fullness of Christ because Jesus is full of mercy. See, the wisdom is not, God, give me information on what to do with this question. The wisdom of God is a lifestyle. Do you realize being full of mercy is what's going to activate everything else we just talked about? Notice when I go back over these qualities that contained within being peace-loving, considerate, and willing to yield contains all of the fruit of the Spirit. Nine of those identified in the book of Galatians, all contained in the words peace-loving, considerate, and willing to yield or submissive, but only activated when I have a life that is full of mercy. Then it says... Not only am I full of mercy, but I'm full of good fruit. We are called to bear fruit to make a difference. See, that, that fruit from our life of wisdom is the result of when we're peacemakers, of when we are kind, honest but kind, when we're walking quick to forgive, when we give others mercy because we know we have been given so much mercy then we are walking as an effective producer in the kingdom of God. And, and our lives, those are full of good fruit. I love the commentary on this verse and a quote from Luke Timothy Johnson. Fruit is both an end and a beginning, the crown of one process and the germ of the next being present in the seed. When you live a fruitful life, within that harvest is the seed for the next season. So when you have, have walked in the gentleness and goodness, which is part of the fruit of the Spirit, and you are bearing that influence, within that is what you're going to need to keep planting that kind of wisdom as you continue into your future. So I'm never without the opportunity to make a difference. If God gives me tomorrow, 
I can set it up to be the best because I can sow for a certain season. So if I am full of mercy, which is activating the fruit of the Spirit, then I am going to have the seed for the next season. Some of you are in the most intense season you've been in in a long time. And if you're led by your feelings, you will be defeated. If you're led by wisdom, a lifestyle, you're going to process through and you're, I, you're, you're going to succeed. You're going to bear fruit in this season. And then you'll have the seed to sow into the next. So this wisdom being so awesome would lead us to this question. How do you receive it? So the Bible will teach us today, starting at Proverbs 9, verse 10, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. This right here is where life changes. If you don't walk in a fear of God, not I'm afraid of Him, but I'm in awe of Him. I honor Him. He's God, and there's no one beside Him. He's God, and there's no opposite equal. He's God, and there is no close second. I come under the authority of God Almighty. That is the fear of the Lord. That's the beginning of this wisdom activating. Because you're not going to be interested in a lifestyle that calls you to be countercultural, to be in counterformation to what your natural mind will tell you and what earthly wisdom will tell you unless you are walking under the authority of God. He is not out here as an accessory. He is up here as God. Right. Try, I'm trying to press this a bit because I really want to help you today. Some of you could walk up to me after this service and say, I am struggling with, in, with intense situations. Hear me. It's, it's going to demand more than information for you to get through it. It's going to demand a certain lifestyle. You must walk in the wisdom of God. So you have to start with, how is it between you and the Lord? Are you navigating on your own? And things that you thought would work out a certain way, they didn't. Now here you are with less of yourself, less confidence, less victory, because the enemy deceives you and you went after it in your own way. You, you set an ambition about it and you went for it and now like life has turned on you and you sit here today more insecure than confident, more defeated than victorious. So let me help you. You've got to come out from earthly wisdom and you've got to submit to God and start walking in godly wisdom. Now, if you'll do that, you will have a different view of God, and that view of God will determine your relationship with God. Let, let's just keep challenging ourselves. We are here today because we believe in faithfulness. We believe in the gathering of God's people. We believe in being here in corporate worship and receiving the word, and we are a local expression of God's global church. We're about honoring God and advancing the kingdom of God. So we're saying, let's keep it real. We are here today, not because this makes me a Christian. We're not here today out of religious duty or observance. We are here today because we are desperate apart from the help of God. <laughs> we're here today because the situations that life is bringing to us is going to demand a power to live it out that is going to come from God. So, Lord, I'm here today saying, you're God, you're good, you're able, 
you're faithful, you're willing. So, Lord, my heart's ready. Speak to me. I want to make some declarations about God. Number one, God is awesome. Psalm 33, 8 says, let the whole world fear the Lord. Let everyone stand in awe of him. Isaiah says, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. Notice this next part. The creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. That's the presence in this room today. The awesome presence of our creator, everlasting, all-knowing God. Number two, God is holy. Exalt the Lord, Psalm 99 says. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow low before his feet, for he is holy. Hebrew says, therefore we are, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, that's the foundation you're built on. That's the kingdom you're a part of. Everything else will be shaken, but this, the kingdom of God, is unshakable because God is all-powerful. And I, I want this to find you today. Something's about to open over this room because when the word is released, it'll just push out distraction and bring you in to a manifest work of the Spirit's presence in your life. He says here, <coughs> That the kingdom is unshakable, so be thankful. Worship God with reverence and awe. God is a consuming fire. <clears throat> My question today, is he that to you? Is he all-consuming? Is his love in your life better than life? God is right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Psalm 19 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. Do you see what happens when we walk in the fear of God? The wisdom of God is released. You're in the word of God. And instead of all of that anxiety, there is joy. It says it right here. You are in the word of the Lord, and it gives joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes, insight, next step, vision. Thank you, Jesus. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. As the worship team comes today, I want to skip down to Proverbs 19. It says, the fear of the Lord leads to life. There it is. Bringing security, not insecurity. Bringing protection from harm. This is speaking of spiritual warfare. You're in it right now. And when you walk in the wisdom of God, you are going to have the life-giving presence that delivers you secure, protected. So when I understand what it means to fear God, I can live fearlessly. James doesn't get five verses into his letter, his sermon, without saying to all of those that he's writing to, you got to press into God through prayer. You need this wisdom. And he said, if you lack it, you press in and you pray asking God. And God gives liberally. God will, will give it abundantly. In other words, the fruit of the Spirit will be in abundance in your life if you'll walk in this life, in this path. Old Testament king was doing fantastic. God was blessing him beyond measure. And he had so many blessings that he went to God in prayer and he didn't say, Lord, would you keep giving me victory? Would you keep stacking the resources? 
He went to God and said, God, would you give me a discerning heart? God, would you give me wisdom? And because he asked for wisdom, he got everything else. I don't want you to bring what's creating pressure today as the request. I want us to start with the request for the wisdom of heaven. You're saying, I want to be a disciple. I want to walk in the way of God. So we're going to follow James' lead, and we're going to pray. And we're going to pray for the life of wisdom. We'll give an altar call. It's to get out of your seat and to come forward if you are willing. You can make your seat an altar. It doesn't matter. But there's something about getting from where you are to a new place and just allowing you to have a concentration of what God is doing and what God is saying. So I want us to do that. But the first thing, one way, not the only way, one way a, a church prays corporately is when we sing and we declare truth. So we're going to sing the chorus of this song, Lord of my life. And this is the prayer. Do you realize the, the life of wisdom is the life of lordship? I'm, I'm yielding to his way over my way. His thought process over my thought process. It's radically different, and it works. It works. Some of you need to accept Jesus as your Savior. Jesus is awesome. Jesus is holy. And Jesus is right. And you need to accept him today because you've never done that. He's in your world, but he's not in your heart. He shows up in your thoughts, but he's not your Savior and your Lord. And that's the starting place for this wisdom to happen for you and in you and through you. So this altar calls for every believer to say, God, I wanna, I've heard from you today and I'm going to walk in that. This is for every unsaved person to say, Jesus, forgive my sins, become my Savior and the Lord of my life.